Well, welcome to the Cinnabar. Today, we're out here to test fire a really interesting early Colt double action revolver. This one's an 1878 model, and it's uh, in 45 Colt, and it's actually a, a updated version called a Philippine model that was, was purchased by the U.S. Army uh, in 1902. Of course, it's in 45 Colt, the, the military uh, cartridge of the time. Now this came to me with a couple of Colts that, that weren't functioning. A uh, guy sold them to me cheap and I, I've got them repaired and, and, and functioning now. But as I was working on this one, I noticed it has a very slight bulge in the barrel down here. So I thought it was a good opportunity to, to test one out. Um, you know, it's, it's slight enough bulge, there's no danger of it coming apart. And we're shooting cowboy action loads. But I want to see how that might affect accuracy. Now that bulge is just about the, the middle of the barrel there. And, and I'm going to postulate that that's not going to affect the accuracy much, but we're going to find out here. If it was down towards the, the muzzle end now, it probably would have a lot greater effect. Let's take a little closer look at this one, and then we'll get to test firing it a little bit. Okay, so here's a little closer look at this double action army. And one of the things you may notice if you're familiar with this model is that we've got a, a great big trigger guard down here. And there's a reason for that. The, the 1878s have a reputation of having a kind of a weak mainspring and having some light primer strikes and misfires and the military was was concerned about that so when they ordered them they ordered them with a a stiffer mainspring and then a longer trigger to give the operator a little more leverage on that trigger there okay you probably can't see it because this one's really mild but we've got just the slightest of a barrel bulge in here this one actually considering that there's very little finish on this revolver has an excellent bore except for the little spot here where that bulge is so i'm kind of looking forward to, to seeing how how the old girl will shoot okay so we're just going to put five shots on target and see how they do now this loads just like a single action army we'll put it in the load notch Load one, skip one, load four more. There's a reason probably that these are a lot like a single action army because William Mason uh, was a designer for Colt and, and had a, a lot of influence on both of them. He would later go on to work for Winchester where he uh, refined a lot of John Browning's designs. A lot of the lever actions that John Browning did for Winchester, same guy that designed this Colt, or this Colt for, this revolver for Colt designed and, and really um, improved and polished up John Browning's design for those lever actions. Okay, so let's take five shots with this thing, see where we're at. It's a little breezy today, a little chilly today, so it's going to be a little hard to hold on real well, but we're going to try. Okay, so it looks like a little low and left. Uh-oh, I think I pulled that one. If there's one flyer, that one was it. Okay, let's see how we did. Now you can see we're low and a little bit left, but a pretty decent group here. And I'm capable of shooting a whole lot worse than that with a handgun. So really that, that bulge doesn't seem to really affect the accuracy much at all. That's really a pretty dandy old revolver after all. Now I hope I haven't given you the impression that because I shot this old Colt with a slight bulge in the barrel, that it's just a, a safe thing or a great idea to shoot any old firearm that has a bulge in the barrel. And most of the time I won't shoot firearms with a bulge. But you really have to take it on a case-to-case -case basis and you need to err to the side of caution. If you have any question about whether it's safe to fire, um, either don't shoot it or take it to a gunsmith and get their opinion on it. But in this case where it was a very slight bulge and, and a relatively low pressure cartridge like the 45 Colt, and we're just shooting cowboy action through it, um, really felt like it, it was safe to shoot, and, and it is. And, and of course, we don't have a lot of options to rebarrel this thing because the, the Philippine models have a six inch barrel, which is not a standard barrel. The nice thing about these 78s is that the barrels off of a single action army 
will interchange with them, but, but that's a kind of a non-standard link. So our only, the only way we're going to find a, a barrel, a used barrel that's going to fit this thing is off of another Philippine model, and there's just not a lot of them out there, not people willing to, to uh, take the barrels off. Um, so we, we could take a seven and a half inch barrel, cut it down to, to five and, or to six inch, um, put the front sight back on, but you know the condition of this gun is probably not worth all that. We could take some some barrel stock like this, this is some 45 Colt barrel stock with a left hand twist like it's supposed to be. But again, you know, we're gonna have to profile the barrel, we're gonna have to chamber it and uh, thread it and try to age it back because it's gonna just be bright shiny. And, and again, this gun, I think the, the best use for this gun is, is just as a plinker the way it is and it shoots pretty darn well the way it is. So again, it's on a case-by-case -case basis, err to the side of caution, but in, in some isolated instances, it's, it's okay to have a, a slight barrel bulge depending on the gun and the caliber, and don't hot rod them. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. I hope maybe you learned a little something. Until next time, happy trails from the Cinnabar.